Hey, big bro. What's going on? Oh, nothing. Except I'm stressing big time. Big time! I'm totally on edge. What? What's going on? Well, I just got done having a nice long visit with our mother and father, that's what. Oh no, I see. It's that bad in there now, huh? Have you been in there lately? Have you seen what it's like in there? No, I refuse to step foot in that place. You know I haven't for like two years now. Yes, but didn't you at least used to stop by sometimes when you knew they weren't home and look in the windows? Yeah, but I couldn't even do that anymore. It was too much for me. Well, I can see why. It's disgusting. I can't believe I lasted two hours in that place. So what is it? Just stuff? It used to be just stuff, but now it's so much worse. There's dirty dishes, trash, junk, just... It's awful, Emily. Just awful. You didn't see any, like, you know... Any what? Dead cats? Uh, I would hope not. Mom and Dad have never had any cats. But I did mean, you know, bugs or mice... No, nothing like that, at least not yet. But who knows, like I said, I was only there for two hours. Although it did feel like two weeks. I just don't understand. They weren't like that when we were kids growing up. I mean, what happened? Oh, you don't remember? Remember what? Uh, maybe you were too young, or it was just lost on you as a naive babe, but it was bad even then. But back then it was just stuff. I mean, do you ever remember us having an actual car in the garage instead of a bunch of crap? I guess you're right. I really didn't even know that garages were for cars until I started going to friends' houses. Well, multiply that by a hundred now. Did you try talking about it with them? I mean, we talk all the time, but that subject is a no-go. Yeah, I brought it up. And they said they'll deal with it one of these days, but they've been saying that for the last 15 years. And you know what that means. It means that we will have to take care of it someday. But can't we just, like, blow it up or something? Set it on fire? Unfortunately, the arson laws are very strict in our state. Is there any getting through to them? Some professional that specializes in these sorts of things? I mean, clearly that's a mental disorder, right? I don't know if it is or not, but you're the one that's gung-ho about therapy. Why don't you ask that lady of yours? Well, I guess I could ask Beth. Yeah, yeah. Ask Beth. See what Beth says to do about our crazy parents. Alright, alright. Just calm down. Sorry, my skin is crawling just being in that place. Hi, is this Dr. Nicolette? Dr. Marcy Nicolette? Yes, it is. Is this Emily Nussbaum? Yes, hello. You must have been expecting my call then. Of course I was. Beth Kilroy told me all about you and your predicament, if you don't mind me saying so. Oh, no, that's fine. You both are professionals, after all. Yes, but I'd of course like to hear it all in your own words. My own words? Yes, what's going on with your family? With my parents, you mean? Well, with your entire family. You see, in situations such as this, everyone is involved in the dynamic. Yes, well, to be honest with you, I really only speak with my parents on the phone these days. Oh, really? So you don't go over to the house anymore? Um, no. In fact, I haven't been there for a couple of years now. I used to stop by and look in the windows sometimes, just to keep tabs. I don't do that anymore. But you said you don't see them much in person either. Why do you think that is? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe because every time I see them, they look older, and it freaks me out. Yes, fear of aging is a natural thing that we all struggle with. I think it's more like the fear of their failing health, and a fear of death, and the fear of having to deal with all of their stuff afterwards. I don't know, I just feel like that house isn't good for them in any way, mentally, physically. Are they in poor physical health? I mean, I don't know. They aren't in the best of health. They're alive, that's about all I can say. And have they said anything to you about not spending as much time with them these days? Oh, no, never. Uh, we don't talk about anything even remotely serious like that. And especially nothing about the house. That's just an off-limits topic. And what about your brother, Paul? He still goes to see them, doesn't he? Yep, he does. Bless his heart. And does he try to talk to them about all of it? Yeah, sometimes. And he always gets the, oh, we'll get to it someday routine. There's a definite stigma attached to what is popularly known as hoarding. I don't believe certain shows on television have done anything but further stigmatize those who suffer from it. 
Yes, I can see that. This is partly the reason why so many refuse to seek help. But that can't be the only reason, Doctor. What do you think it is? Well, many doctors have varying opinions on the matter. My own is that it's a matter of personal control. In a world sorely lacking it, our homes are our kingdoms. Possessions make it seem more permanent. Possessions will be here after us. It's a way of delaying the inevitable of death, if only in one's mind. Wow, you really are good, aren't you, Doctor? Well, you came to most of that yourself, don't you think? I don't know, I guess so. Great, now you can make that check for $125 out to Dr. Marcy Nicolette. Oh, um, right, okay. Would you possibly consider speaking to my parents, Doctor? Well, I'd have to think about it. It would have to be under the right circumstances, at the right stage. I wouldn't want to do more harm than good. Right, yes, of course. Well, thanks again, Doctor. Hey, Mom, how's it going? Oh, well, it's about time I hear from my daughter. How long has it been now since you've called me? Only like a week, Mom. Oh, well, it feels like a whole lot longer. I hear from your brother so much more, I guess. Well, I'm a little bit more busy than him, to be honest. But still, you can't come to visit your father and I every now and then. I try to, but it just never works out. It's been... It's been... Two years, Emily! Two whole years since you've been here with us! I'm sorry, Mom. Okay, that's it. I'm just so tired of all of this. I'm just sick of it. What are you talking about, Mom? I mean, you being so distant. I mean, Paul only staying a couple of hours when he's here and then just going home as fast as he can. Well, look, do you want me to finally be honest for once? Is that what you're after? Yes, it would be nice for you to finally be honest with me for once in your life. Fine, but I don't think you can handle it, so just be prepared, okay? You don't... you don't think I can handle it? Well, what does that mean? It means... it means... it's the house, Mom. It's the... the house? Yes, of course it's the house. It's disgusting. It's repulsive. It's... it's scary. What do you mean it's scary? Mom, I hate to break it to you, and I don't know if it's ever occurred to you before, but you and Dad, well, you're hoarders. Hoarders? You mean, like those people on that TV show? Yes, Mom, exactly like that. Oh, that's just ridiculous. We aren't anything like those people. Those people are disgusting. Mom, you may not be there all the way, but you're well on your way. And if you don't get help soon, it may be too late. Help? What do you mean? What kind of help? Well, you see, I've been talking to this really great psychiatrist who specializes in this sort of thing. Her name is Dr. Marcy Nicolette. Ugh, I am not talking to some... some nutty old shrink. But why not? Because shrinks are for crazy people and we aren't crazy. We just like to... Uh, to what? To collect things, okay? So what's wrong with that? A lot of people collect things. Is that what this is all about? Collecting things? A lot of this stuff is worth a lot of money, Emily. It's it's going to fund your retirement someday, and then you'll feel really bad about this. Mom, it's all junk. And what about the trash, though? The, the trash? What do you mean? Paul told me about it. About all the garbage piling up, the dirty dishes. He... he told you that? Come on, Mom. It's time to get some help. No, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Do you hear me? Everything is fine. Mom! Hello, Emily. Have you talked to your mother? How did it go? I'm very eager to get started with speaking to both of your parents soon. Well, Doctor, I'm really sorry, but I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon now. Oh, so it didn't go very well then? Um, no, it did not. In fact... She seems to be in total denial that there's any problem at all. Ah, yes, I see. Well, that's very much to be expected. Really? Is it, Doctor? Because it was only pretty upsetting to me. No, please take heart. It's all a part of the process. But what do we do about it then? I mean, if they won't talk to you, we can't force them, right? No, we can't force them, of course. That would be counterproductive. However, what is in order is an intervention. Oh, really? Do we have to? I don't see how there's any other way. 
First, I'll talk to your mother. I'll feel her out. She already knows about me, so it won't come as a surprise. After that, your brother can say his part, and so on and so forth. Well, I don't know what else to do. The other day, I stopped by there and looked in the window. Yes, and what did you see? Well, it was terrible. It was worse than I'd ever seen it. I swear, I think it may be a fire hazard in there or something. Well, then time is of the essence. We must do this thing today, Emily. Okay, Doctor. If you say so. Hello, Janet. I'm Dr. Marcy Nicolette. How are you today? Doctor... Doctor who? Your son and daughter have asked me to speak with you about a few things. Would this be a good time? Oh, I see. You're the doctor who's going to try to talk me out of keeping my collectibles, huh? Your... collectibles, huh? Yes, of course. My children seem to have a problem with my husband and I collecting things. But that's just too bad. It's what we love to do, and this stuff is worth money. Janet, I just want you to know that I'm no threat to you or your home. Your children only have your best interests in mind. Our best interests to throw out all of our possessions? Janet, it isn't only that that they are concerned about. Then what else are they worried about? What else could there be? I don't mean to offend you, so please don't take this personally. How could I not take any of this personally? It's all a personal attack. It's an insult. Well, I was simply going to ask about the dirty dishes. What? They told you about those? Yes, ma'am. They did. Oh, yes. Um, the dirty dishes. Fine. Well, I admit we have a bit of a problem with washing our dishes, okay? But do you have a dishwasher? Well, um... Yeah, we have a dishwasher. Actually, we have a really nice one. So, then why don't you use it? It's just that we get behind in some stuff, you know, and then one thing leads to another, and then they all start to pile up. Yes, of course, I understand. Things can domino very quickly. You get busy. It's easy to fall behind. Yes, it's easy. It's very easy. And then you just end up looking at the piles and piles of dishes, and it's all so overwhelming that you don't end up doing anything right? Yes, yes, of course, uh, that's exactly what it's like. And then comes the shame, right? And then the fear? So, you know. This is a very common feeling, Janet, it's normal. I've dealt with this many times with many patients. You have? And you've had success with them? Absolutely, yes, for sure. Well, uh, then where would we even start? I mean, uh, this house is... I admit, it's kind of a lot. I'd like to come over and take a look at it, if that would be okay with you. Oh, well, okay. I guess so. I sense some apprehension, perhaps? Well, it's just that we don't usually have visitors, I, I mean strangers, inside the house. Don't worry, I'm sure that I've seen much worse. Do you, um, do you have any bugs or anything, though? Any rodents? No, I mean, not that I've seen. Okay, uh, great, because um, that would be more of a problem. I'm not disgusting, Doctor, don't worry. So how large is your house? Do you have a basement? Yes, actually, we do have a basement. Uh-huh, I, I see. And is it full of stuff? Um, I'll take that as a yes. Then yes, it is. You're right. Then I'll bring a flashlight. Oh, don't worry, Doctor. We have 20. Well, um, Emily, I talked to your mother, and in fact, I went over to the house to visit for a while. Oh, you actually went over there to the house, too? Like, you even went inside and everything? Um, yes, that's right. I went inside. I explored the entire house. And what did you think, Doctor? How bad was it? Well, I must say, it's not the worst house that I've ever been in. But what you have here is a very serious situation. Yes, Doctor, I can only imagine. Well, I've seen it in my nightmare, but what about my mother? What impressions of her did you get? Did she say anything that you think you can use? Yes, um, your mother is a very disturbed woman, I must say. Well, you didn't have to tell me that, Doc. Yes, and your father isn't quite as emotionally deranged, but it appears that your mother has quite the influence on him. What do you mean? 
Well, I think that Mother is a very powerful influence on him. I believe that your father would be very happy to somehow find a way... A way to get rid of everything in that house. Who knows? Maybe even sell it and move someplace smaller and easier to maintain. Really? He said that? He told you that? Well, he didn't use those words exactly. But he nearly said as much. It was when your mother wasn't around, of course. Oh, poor daddy. Now, I don't want to lay all of the blame at your mother's feet. Your father's had plenty of neurosis that he needs to work out himself as well. Yes, uh, of course. And it's not all your mother's fault, either. It's clear to me that she has a disease. What do you think it is, doctor? They don't have a name for it yet. But is there a treatment for it? I mean, I mean, can she be helped? For your mother, the best course of action would be cognitive behavior therapy. I believe that with the right amount of therapy, we could make great strides with both of your parents. But it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of hard work and discipline on their part. I understand, Doctor. And on yours and your brother's as well. Oh, um, ours too, huh? What do you mean? Well, beyond the obvious needs, such as helping your parents clean out the house, throw away trash, so on and so forth, you'll have to be there for them emotionally, to talk to them, to understand them, and to not be judgmental. That's the most important thing. But that's also the hardest thing. At least it is for me. Well, perhaps that's something that you and I need to work on ourselves. Yes, um, perhaps so. Hello, honey. How are you today? Oh, hey, Mom. Pretty tired, but I'm okay. Yes, honey, I am too, but I just want to thank you so, so much for everything. Well, Mom, it's not just been me. I mean... It's not really been me at all. It's all been you and Dad. You've done so much work on yourselves, on each other, on the house. Honestly, you've really proved Paul and I wrong. Oh, well, I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or... Just take it as a compliment, please. Well, okay then. So Dad really wants to sell the house, huh? It's a long way away from that. But it's getting closer every day, I think. We've even been talking to a real estate agent. Oh, really? Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, and maybe someplace smaller would be good for us. Maybe someplace a lot smaller. Then we couldn't fit any more junk in our house. I guess that would be a good plan. And of course, we're going to still be seeing Dr. Nicolette for a while. Uh, for a long while, perhaps. I think that may be a good idea, Mom. Well, I think we did a pretty good job, sis. Um, yeah, I'll say so. If you had told me a year ago that our parents would be closing on their house today, well, I would have said that you were nuts. Yeah, me too. I guess we owe it all to cognitive behavior therapy. And Dr. Nicolette, of course. I guess we sort of owe her, don't we? So whatever happened to all of that stuff in the house? Well, we gave away anything that was worth giving away and threw away the rest. Hopefully somebody was able to use some of that stuff. Yeah, hopefully. So I guess we're having dinner over at their new apartment Friday? You're coming, right? That's right, big bro. I'll see you there. With the continued help of Dr. Nicolette, Janet and her husband are collective free and living happily in their two-bedroom apartment. Both Emily and Paul visit them regularly and help them nip any unnecessary messes in the bud. Dr. Nicolette continues her work and life's mission, helping people overcome their addiction to clutter 